Did you know that Christmas trees were once viewed as a mockery of the holiday? In fact, at one point in time, the state of Massachusetts even fined people for Christmas decorations. That was way back in the 1600s, but they remained controversial for years after that. By the 1800s, things like Christmas carols and decorations were viewed as pagan symbols, and many rejected the practice. The New York Times put it this way in 1883, the German Christmas tree, a rootless and lifeless corpse, was never worthy of the day. Christmas trees have been a part of German Christmas celebrations for centuries, and it's been a part of winter solstice celebrations for even longer than that. But the tradition did not start to become globally practiced until this engraving went the mid-1800s version of viral. It shows Queen Victoria standing next to a decorated tree. Christmas tree fever took off in England and soon reached America. The White House introduced a Christmas tree to its halls, and by the 1930s, the most famous American Christmas tree was lit at Rockefeller Center in New York City. The real tree was a holiday staple in many American households. But then, the fake tree entered the market. In our search for the perfect Christmas tree, we went back to the forest to see an original and duplicated it. Today, over 80% of Christmas trees displayed are artificial, while just under 18% are real. And while real tree sales are stagnant, sales of artificial trees have been rising for years. But this market competition is just one of the issues real trees are facing. Of the 95 million American homes that will celebrate Christmas this year, about 75% are estimated to do so with an artificial tree, which is surprising when considering what an unattractive option they were for most of history. The first artificial trees were made in Germany in the 1800s using goose feathers dyed green. By the 1930s, one company started using toilet brushes to create faux Christmas trees. But soon, companies devoted to making fake Christmas trees started to spring up. I'm Mac Harmon, and I'm the founder and CEO of Balsam Hill. And it's kind of become the leading brand of faux Christmas trees. What really helped the trees take off, I think, is when people went to a different needle technology that looked more realistic. At Balsam Hill, we call it true needle, and that's polyethylene molded branches. And they look much more like a real tree. And so I think that really helped the conversion from kind of the spindly, sad looking Charlie Brown artificial tree of the early 70s to the more modern tree today. The one other thing I'd say is from a safety standpoint, most places in public buildings, you have to have a faux tree for fire safety. Artificial trees looks like real trees. Combine that with convenience and longevity, and it makes for a formula real tree growers are struggling to compete with. That brings us to a farm in Spring Grove, Illinois. So I'm George Richardson, one of the co-owners of Richardson Farm. Definitely fake trees has impacted the market for real trees because it was very convenient for people to just go up into the attic or down to the basement, pull that tree out of the box, and you didn't have to drive to the farm or the retail lot and um, you know, bundle up the kids. Each side of the artificial or real tree debate has a different take on a few hot topics on the claim that a real tree may cause allergies. So that was really the inspiration for starting Balsam Hill, was having a real looking Christmas tree like the one behind me for people who had allergies and couldn't have real trees. And then they said, oh, they're full of mold and mildew and gonna affect your allergies. It's like, where'd that come from? This is a 100% natural tree. On the environment. If you think about reduce, reuse, recycle, the second thing is to reuse. And that's really what an artificial tree is, is something that you reuse year after year. Christmas trees are a crop grown by farmers specifically for this purpose and 100% recyclable, renewable, sustainable resource. In fact, according to Dr. John Kayser from the Carbon Trust, who spoke to the BBC in 2016, a six and a half foot fake tree has a carbon footprint that is equivalent to 40 kilograms of greenhouse gas emissions, which is more than twice that of a tree that ends up in a landfill and more than 10 times of a tree that is burnt after using. He also said that you'd have to use an artificial tree for at least 10 years to keep the environmental impact lower than a real tree. However, if you just look at a weekly drive that the average person takes, that can have a higher impact than having a Christmas tree. 
and on the actual subjective Christmas experience. No, this tree behind me, it's pre-lit. You don't have to kind of bring the tree home every year, cut the trunk off, set it up. You don't have to water it every day. People, they thank us for having a Christmas tree farm that they can come to uh, cut a tree down. Both sides make convincing arguments, but real Christmas trees haven't been able to keep up to the artificial tree's growing popularity, which has resulted in some unorthodox attempts to reclaim the market. In 2004, the National Christmas Tree Association, which represents real tree growers, released this video game, The Attack of the Mutant Artificial Trees. It was a takedown of the artificial tree industry. Things have since cooled down between the two camps, but the struggle isn't over for real trees. We've kind of been fighting to keep our own, and it's kind of a shame, but you know, we would like to think that Real trees are what bringing evergreen into the home in the darkest days of winter is the tradition. Despite the debate, problems for the real Christmas tree industry are not just limited to this rising competition. First, as the weather drastically shifts, it brings with it more climatic disasters like wildfires and droughts. Trees take between seven and 10 years to mature, and wildfires have wiped out entire Christmas tree farms. This was going to be a new Christmas tree right here. It's not been enough to affect the supply of real trees, but it is hard on the grower who gets in the way of those fires. Then there is the issue of farmers aging out of the business without anyone to take their place. James Robert Farmer, an associate professor at Indiana University Bloomington, conducted a survey among tree farmers in Indiana in 2019. His team found that the average age of farmers was 64 and that 62% of farms did not have a transition plan in place for after retirement. This issue may be connected to the industry's unique challenges reverberating from the 2008 recession. Between 2000 and 2010, we had an oversupply of Christmas trees. And in association with the recession of 2008, we lost a lot of value in our trees. The price went down and they became almost non-profitable to grow. Some people left the industry because it wasn't a viable crop. Even as real Christmas trees are now seeing a better balance between supply and demand, it remains tight. We have never had a shortage. We're not having one this year. We're just now having a healthy balance where the prices after 20 years have finally been able to rise for the farmer to a point where it is profitable again. Still, all of this comes to a head when compared to the ever-widening market for artificial trees. Where things could change for the real Christmas tree industry could come from a resurgence of interest from younger generations. We probably have had an increase in market because of the millennial generation who have been very outdoors and organic, and that age group is marrying and having children now. In 2018, 32.8 million real Christmas trees were purchased, up nearly 5 million from the year before, while artificial tree purchases during the same two years had a smaller jump, from 21.1 million in 2017 to over 2 million more the next year. 2020 will be a different year for the holidays. As many families remain apart due to the pandemic, Christmas trees, real or fake, remain a way to bring a little bit of light and joy into the lives of people across the country and beyond. Thanks for tuning in. Let us know in the comments what kind of tree you celebrate with. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.